Hello everyone, welcome to Pi Square Academy. This is Nehalika and today we are back with a Y series question. What are Y series? We are generally discussing on the basic questions or uh, fascinating questions that generally runs any electrical engineer's mind. Like why do we use 50 Hertz? Why sinusoids? Why 11 kV? Why 132 kV? Why do we use three phase? Why not n phase systems? So such videos. So if you are new to our channel, please like and subscribe to us and keep watching for the question. So uh, today what we will be discussing is the question for today is why dependent sources are not deactivated. But before understanding the question we will understand sources. What are types of sources? The quick answer is voltage and current. No. We will start from the very basics about what are sources. So let's begin. Sources can be categorized. The first thing that how do you categorize a source is either an AC source or a DC source. Now from AC and DC source, the next sources are voltage and current. No, we will classify them into independent sources and dependent sources. So independent and dependent sources, the next thing that will come is again these particular sources are described into ideal and practical sources. So now when I speak of ideal and practical sources, what are ideal sources? Obviously the answer is the sources that will not have losses. When I speak of a practical source, obviously the source is lossy. So ideal source, when I speak of an ideal independent source and a practical independent source, it makes sense. But when I speak of a dependent ideal source and a dependent practical source, it doesn't make complete sense. Why? Because these are dependent sources. These are actually depending on any element for already. So there is no such thing as ideality of these sources. You cannot just say that these dependent sources are ideal in nature. They are actually depending on a certain element. So the ideality of a dependent source doesn't make any sense. So we only have practical dependent sources. So now once we have the category, now the actual picture comes of these voltages and current sources being categorized into ideal and practical. So for both ideal and practical, I have a voltage and I have a current source. Similarly, for a practical also, I'll have a voltage source and I'll have a current source. Right? Now once we understand this, let us have a brief idea on these symbols also. So a ideal voltage source will can be represented by this or it can be represented by this. Obviously the arrow head indicating the positive polarity. When I speak of a current source, this is how my independent current source looks like. Now coming to practical sources, voltage and current, but again there is a particular classification that these voltage and current can depend either on voltage or current again. Similarly, for the current sources also. So how many types of dependent sources we are discussing? We have four dependent sources. A voltage source which depends on voltage, a voltage source which depends on current, a current source which depends on voltage, a current source which depends on current. So how the symbols are? Currents, let's have this symbol. Voltages, let's have this symbol. If it's voltage, voltage depending on voltage. Xv1 depending on current. Xi1. Current depending on voltage. Xv1 current depending on current. Xi1. So this is how all the voltage and currents symbols are there. 
Now coming to a perfect example of these sources, an ideal and practical I have a voltage source as a battery. The perfect example of an ideal independent source voltage is a battery. For a current, this is astonishing. Solar PV cells. What are solar PV cells? I think you are having a bit idea on what are solar PV cells. So solar PV cells are a perfect example of an ideal current source. Now when I speak of all these sources, dependent sources, when you are studying analog electronics, any amplifier that you study of are generally an example of these dependent sources. Okay. So I think we have an overview right now on types of sources, how do they look, what are the examples, we have all covered that. So now let's get back to the question that why dependent sources are not being deactivated. Okay, before understanding now the question that why these are not being deactivated, we'll see how we deactivate an independent source and then we'll relate how we do not deactivate a dependent source. So before getting into the deactivation, see this is what a voltage source supplying a load resistor RL. This is a current source supplying the load resistor RL. I just want to take a moment and make it clear why we call them as ideal and practical sources. If I want to change the load value resistance RL, assume I take it as at 1 ohm. Okay. Now what is the voltage across 1 ohm? V. Now I will change this 1 ohm to 100 ohms. Now what is the voltage across RL? V. Now I put it to 1 kilo ohm. What is the voltage across RL? V. So what is it indicating that in spite of there are changes in the load, the voltage across my load is not changing. It means if I have a 5 volt source, the 5 voltage is absolutely intact across my load. Similarly coming to a current source, if I want to have this current source, there is a current that is flowing, assume 6 amperes. So for this 6 ampere current to flow, even if you change the load from 1 ohm to 1 kilo ohm, always and always there is a current that will be 6 amperes, right? So what if this sources are turning into a practical source, to, for that to happen, Obviously at your load you will not get 5 volts and obviously here you will not get 6 amperes. So if I say 6 amperes it means you will obviously get something less than 6 amperes, obviously not greater right. So here also we will not get exactly 5 volts, not greater than 5 volts but something less than 5 volts. To have the drop or to have that value less than 5 volts I think I will add a resistance but that resistance is my internal resistance. So where do I add that resistance? For a voltage source, I'll add it in series and for a current source, I'll add it in parallel. So the question will arise, why did I add it in parallel here? Why did I add it in series here? Let me name it as RS. Let me name it as RS. So you will see now that even if there is a 5 volt here, there will be a certain drop on RS and the voltage that is available now across RL will be something less than 5 volts. I am assuming a current I. So the drop is I into RS. So the new voltage that will be existing is 5 minus I into RS. Right? This is my VRL. Similarly, if I speak of a current source, initially I was having a current of 6 amperes. Now since I have added a resistance here, some current will go here. Let that current be small i and now the current that is going is i plus the current that is going in RL. 
so obviously i will get a lesser current now in rl which indicates that again it's a practical current source these drops are happening in its internal resistance so after we have understood the concept of an ideal and practical source let's move on to deactivating them so if i want to deactivate a voltage source please mind it if i want to deactivate a voltage source i mean i have to make the voltage zero right i should make the voltage zero i want to make the voltage zero i have a battery i get the chemical out of the battery that's how i make the voltage as zero but this voltage will now become zero volts but obviously the internal resistance of the battery remains intact i have not changed it so the common saying that goes that if you want to deactivate a source replace the source with its internal resistance is a taboo what we actually understand is we are making the voltage zero okay similarly if i speak of a current source i will make the current zero if i want to make the current zero i will open circuit this right i will open circuit this and i will short circuit this but rs will remain as it is so again the concept is we are not making the or uh, current uh, resistance replacing it with its internal resistance we are actually making the sources values as zeros so now let's start understanding these concepts of activating and deactivating with the help of common theorems that we are aware of so we'll take the most popular theorem the thevenin's theorem once i take the example of a thevenin's theorem and then we'll try to understand the deactivation concept of a dependent and an independent source so now to understand let me take an example of a circuit so what i am doing is i have marked this dependent source i have taken the example of a voltage source that is depending on voltage so it's a voltage dependent voltage source so this is depending on a voltage v2 where is v2 v2 is here okay so once v2 is here i am assuming that this voltage source is depending on this value of v2 so now let me try to figure out the thevenin's equivalent at the load resistance rl okay so let me name this point a and b so once i start that i want to figure out the resistance i will remove the value of rl once i remove the value this is my new circuit where i am supposed to find the r thevenin value so i need to find r thevenin which will be equivalent to the resistance across ab now the first thing that we know is we have to do is we have to deactivate the sources so now you can see i have how many sources two sources a voltage dependent source so a voltage independent source and a voltage dependent source so once i want to deactivate this source you see that i have already mentioned a 2 ohm resistance value which is obviously its internal value so how do i change i will make this 5 volts to 0 volts and this source will now change into something like this do you agree this is what i have been short circuiting and this is what is the internal resistance so now my circuit is looking something like this now the question arises is that this 6v2 is already zero yes really 6v2 is already zero have a close look i have no source in the circuit if there is no source in the circuit there is no voltage that has been developed across resistance r2 so if there is no voltage that has developed across resistance r2 obviously 6v2 is nothing but dead it means this is a dead circuit there is no supply there is no current there is no voltage that is being developed 
so i can simply remove this circuit remove this from the circuit that means i can simply put 6v2 to short circuit now once i say that that i want to deactivate 6v2 and replace it with a short circuit did i miss something yes i missed the value of its internal resistance the same internal resistance that was coming into picture when i was speaking of an independent source i already told you that if you completely remove 6v2 the internal resistance associated with 6v2 also comes down to zero it means you are actually making this 2 ohm also as zero ohms and obviously that is not at all acceptable so it means directly you can never ever deactivate a source even if there would have been a voltage source present here and i wanted to make 6v2 zero i would have made tampered this element itself so that is also not allowed because these dependent sources are actually depending for their energy or power on any other element that is present within the circuit so once you want to make them deactivate you are actually tampering the element on which they are depending so that's how we never deactivate a dependent source i hope you understood if there are still any questions you can please put that in the comment box we'll get back to you so covering everything the checklist is what did we cover in this video we had an overview of what are types of sources ac dc independent dependent ideal practical and what are the examples of these sources then we moved on to understanding what are actual ideal sources and practical sources and then we finished off with a main question that why dependent sources are not being deactivated so thank you for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up the our courses are by the way live so please have a look on them the sub, the link is in the description so for any other queries please write back to us and till then keep, stay tuned keep watching keep rocking thank you